Hello, fans. This is Byram Saab saying the Philadelphia Eagles will be shooting for the blue in 52. And I'll be rooting for them. Directing this team of new stars, talents, greater striking power, and spirit will be a four-man coaching staff. This staff will be headed by Wayne Milner, who was former All-Pro with the Washington Redskins, and before that, All-American at Notre Dame. He started midway last year, but will be at the helm for the beginning of 1952. Fans, here's head coach Wayne Milner. Hello, fans. With the added talent and my new assistant coaches, I can assure you of a great season this coming fall. Now, this big fellow in front of me will be Milner's line coach. He is Jim Trimble, who was a former star at Indiana University and later director of athletics and head coach at Wichita University. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to be back, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you out at Chai Park again this fall. Say, do you all remember this fellow? You're right. He's Frank Reagan, who played so brilliantly for the University of Pennsylvania, later with the New York Giants, and for the last three years with our Philadelphia Eagles. Frank will be Wayne's assistant and in charge of the backfield. Hello, fans. I'm really happy to remain with the Eagles as a coach. Now, this fellow over here knows just about as much in the T formation as anyone I've ever run across. He is Vic Linskog, who's been the center for the Eagles for the last eight years, and before that was All-American with the Stanford 41 Rose Bowl team. He will assist Jim in the line and uh, will be one of the new assistant coaches. Hello, folks. I consider it a great opportunity to be selected by the Philadelphia Eagles as an assistant coach and have every confidence of a successful season in 52. Well, fans, you've met the coaching staff for 52. Now let's sit back, relax, and see the highlights of the 1951 season. At Chicago, the visiting Eagles brought bad news to the hometown Cardinals in the season's opener at Comiskey Park. We pick up the action in the third quarter as the Eagles leading 10 to nothing send Frank Ziegler crashing for seven yards to the card 28. Quarterback Adrian Burke sneaks for six more as the birds begin a drive for another score. Burke, a newcomer to the Eagles, goes back to pass. It's a short one to Pete Pijos, crossing from right end, and Big Pete skips into the end zone to rack up another Eagle tally to put the Philadelphians in front, 16 to nothing. Bob Walston, with a conversion and a field goal under his belt already, provides a perfect kick. Eagles 17, Cardinals nothing. Now the Chicago Cardinals explode into action. Bill Cross gets the handoff from Topuka and scampers around right end. Cross just won't be stopped as he dodges and dances for 32 yards before being brought down by Grant and McHugh on their own 28. On the very next play, Armour Angsman bolts inside left end and sprints for home to put the Redbirds back in the ball game with big points. The conversion is good, and it's Eagles 17, Cardinals 7. With the third quarter running out, Yablonski kicks off for the Cardinals. Clyde Scott takes it on his goal line, comes out to the 18, fumbles, and the Cardinals' Don Stonecipher scoops it up, gets back to the Eagles' seven before Bob Walston can pull him down. As the fourth quarter begins, the cards threaten from the 10. Tripuka, respectful of the Eagle line, elects to throw one. It's intercepted by Bud Sutton, and the Cardinal threat is canceled. With two minutes left in the game, Adrian Burke drops back to pass from his own 36. It's intended for Pritchard, but the Cards' Ray Ramsey nails it in a leaping catch. He's up in a flash and gets to the 50 before he's stopped by Jim Palmer. The Cardinals are quick to capitalize on the break. Trapuca goes back to try the air. He lofts a long one downfield. And another break as Pat McHugh tips the ball into the hands of Don Stonecipher to put Chicago on the Eagle 7. 
From the seven, Trapuca pitches out to young Bill Cross, who gallops wide and nearly manages to squeeze across as he goes out of bounds on the one. And a beautiful bit of deception, Trapuca hands off to Almer Angsman, who knifes across for the second Chicago tally. The conversion is good, but the Eagles turn back the Cardinals in the season's opener, 17 to 14. The San Francisco 49ers, fresh from a 24 to 10 victory over the champion Cleveland Browns, invaded Philadelphia's Shy Park to tangle with the Eagles in a night game. The 49ers were favored, but Bo McMillan and his boys had a few surprises up their sleeves to the enjoyment of 26,000 fans. In the first quarter, the 49ers start quickly with Joe the Jet Perry pounding out 12 yards to his own 40. On the next play, Frankie Albert hands to Verl Lily White and the speedy halfback streaks 60 yards without an Eagle defender laying a hand on him. Salto's conversion is good, and the 49ers take an early 7-0 lead. The 49ers kickoff goes to Bob Walston, who fumbles, but recovers on the Eagles' 32. Adrian Burke on the first play connects to Bob Walston for 26 yards down to the 42. Moments later, Burke fades and fires to Pete Pijos for 17 more. Burke then hands off to Jim Palmer, who plows to the 16. From the 12, Burke hands to Ziegler, who fumbles but the alert Mr. Burke scoops up the pigskin and scampers to the five. Jim Palmer then barrels across for the six points. Walston's conversion ties the score 7-7. In the second quarter, Burke fades and fires a long one downfield, but the 49ers Jim Kaysen intercepts Picking up blockers, he slips, reverses his field, and scampers for 33 yards. But the clock runs out, and the two teams are deadlocked 7-all at the end of the first half. In the third period, the 49ers' Albert kicks out from behind his own goal line, and the Eagles' Dan Sandifer is smothered in his tracks. On his own, 48. Featuring a new L formation, Jim Palmer carries to the midfield strike. From the same formation, Burke fades back to pass. Finds Clyde smack over Scott in the open and hits him on the 10. Scott stumbles the rest of the way for the score. Walston's extra point makes it 14-7 Eagles. With the ball on their own 42, the 49ers Albert pitches to Joe Perry who goes for seven yards, but fumbles and the Eagles recover. Bill McReady's now in a tailback for the Eagles, connects to Bosch Pritchard who goes down to the 49er 35. Burke back at quarter connects to Pritchard who steps out of bounds on the 15. Burke on a quarterback sneak, fumbles, and the 49ers recover on their own 14. Buck Shaw's charges fail to gain, and Alberts kicks out. Sandifer takes it, and he's dropped in his tracks. Now the birds begin to move. Burke connects to Pijos for nine yards at the end of the quarter. Faking beautifully, Burke again rifles to Pijos, who goes to the 49ers, 28. Two plays prove unsuccessful, so Burke sends Scott wide to the right in the L formation, and then pitches to him in the end zone for the touchdown. 
The extra point is good, and the Eagles lead 21 to 7. Later in the period, Burke punts from his own 28. The ball takes a bad bounce, and the 49ers find themselves at the midfield strike. Y.A. Tittle, now in at quarter, fires to Gordon Solto, who fights his way to the Eagles' 35. Tittle then hits Lily White for nine more to the 26. Tittle's right arm chalks up another first down as the 49ers move to the 16. Pearl Lily White snares the next Tittle aerial, and the Eagles' lead is cut to 21 to 14. But the green-shirted Eagles dominate the play for the remainder of the game and take over undisputed possession of first place in the American Conference. Stout Steve Owen casts a knowing eye over his New York football giants as they warm up for their battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are led by a new coaching staff. Here is assistant coach Trimble. And here is head coach Wayne Milner. This game determines whether New York will remain on top in the American Conference or the National Football League. A few plays into the first quarter, the Giants are forced to kick from their own 30. Charlie Connolly does the punting. Clyde Scott is under it for the Eagles, gathers it in, and sets off on a brilliant run back that brings the ball 22 yards upfield to the 47 as Scott nearly misses, breaking away for the entire distance. With Bill McGreedy's in at quarterback, the birds take to the wing. A bullet pass hits Bob Walston on the giant 41. Two plays later, McGreedy steps back and fires again. Pete Pijos feels it to put the ball on the New York 24. Again, it's McGreedy's passing as the Eagles threaten. He lobs a short one to Bob Walston, who gallops right between the uprights to score early for the Eagles. Walston converts, and it's Eagles 7, Giants nothing. In the second quarter, the birds from Philadelphia bid for another tally. From his own 49, McGreedy's hits the mark as Pete Piho snares the pass, gets to his feet, and pulls his way to the Giant 26. On fourth down, the Eagles, grounded by the giant defense, attempt a field goal. Walston's kick is good, and the Philadelphians lead the undefeated New Yorkers 10 to nothing. Late in the second quarter, the Eagles move again, this time on the arm of Adrian Burke. Big Pete Pijos is on the receiving end for a gain of 11 yards. Burke keeps right on pitching as he goes right back from the giant 36 to throw again. It's a long high one. Bob Walston is there to make the catch, and the Eagles threaten from the five. Two plays later, Ziegler plunges across, and the Philadelphians blank the Giants in the first half while rolling up 17 points to the dismay of the New York Wooders. In the third quarter, the Giants explode into action. Joe Scott cuts inside end and sprints into the Eagles' backyard, a solid 37 yards before being brought to a sliding halt on the 12. And the Giants don't loiter there as Charlie Connolly pitches to Bill Stribling, who drags a couple of Eagle tacklers across the goal line for the Giants' first tally. Eagles 17, Giants 7. Two minutes later, the Giants' Harmon Row nails Bosch Pritchard behind the goal line to rack up another two points to make it Eagles 17, Giants 9. Adrian Burke kicks for Philadelphia from his own 20 after the safety. The high punt drops into the waiting arms of Evelyn Tunnell, and he does what the New York fans have been hoping for all afternoon as he dodges away from the outstretched hands of the Eagle defenders to romp 72 yards behind, good blocking, adding another brilliant run back to his record and a touchdown to the New York side of the scoreboard. Eagles 17, Giants 16. In no time at all, the Giants are back in Eagle country. Chuck and Charlie Connolly heaves downfield. Bill Stribling has it, and the New Yorkers perch on the Philadelphia 30. But not for long, Eddie Price comes out to his right, cuts down the sidelines, and the Eagles find themselves on the short end of the score as the Giants tally four times in less than eight minutes. Score now, Giants 23, Eagles 17. Near the end of the third quarter with the Eagles trying to get back in the ball game, Burke passes from his own goal line, but the Giants' Otto Schnellbacher makes a long arm to intercept, turns around and heads back for the goal, getting to the 17 before he is brought down. 
The birds won't yield a touchdown, however, and as the fourth quarter begins, Ray Poole boots a placement that splits the uprights for a giant field goal, boosting the score to Giants 26, Eagles 17. Late in the game, the Eagles move through the air from their own 36. Burke finds Walston available. Bob latches on, gets to the Giant 45. On the next play, Burke keeps the ball in the air. It goes over the middle, this time to Pete Pihos, and Pete batters to the 22. With the seconds ticking away, Burke fires for the third straight time, right into the arms of Bob Walston in the end zone to narrow the Giant lead to two points. But time is too short, and the New York football Giants remain undefeated and on top of the American Conference heap as they down the Philadelphia Eagles 26-24. At Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, with United Nations veterans as their guests, the single wing Steelers took on the Philadelphia Eagles in an all Pennsylvania clash. Early in the first quarter, the Birds find themselves back to their own 19, and Adrian Burke punts out of danger. Pittsburgh's Howard Hartley takes it on the Steeler 44 and gets six yards into Eagle territory before he is stopped. Pittsburgh drives to the Philadelphia 29. Then Chuck Watman cuts inside end for 11 yards to the 18. With the birds refusing to give up any more ground, Joe Gary attempts a field goal. It's good! And the end of the first quarter finds the Steelers leading the Eagles 3 to nothing. In the second period, Burke passes for the Eagles from deep in his own territory. It's intercepted by Jerry Shipke, and he races across the goal line to make it Steelers 10. Philadelphia Eagles nothing. Now it's the Steelers backed up to their own goal line. Joe Gary punts. The ball bounces to midfield. Dan Sandifer scoops it up, puts on a classy performance as he carries all the way to the Pittsburgh 26. Two plays later, Burke steps back from the 22 and heaves a long one right where Bob Walston can snare it as he crosses the goal line and Philadelphia is in the ball game. Steelers 10, Eagles 7. Moments later, the Steelers are again forced to kick. This time, Gary punts from the 10. It goes way upfield, but that man Sandifer is there again to come loping back into Pittsburgh territory, moving to the 39. Burke takes to the air once more, spots Pete Pihos, and hits him for a first down on the 25. Burke sticks to the airways, and Pihos makes a beautiful catch in the end zone as the Eagles lead the Steelers at halftime, 14 to 10. In the third quarter, the Steelers begin to roll. Chuck Hortman back to pass, spots an opening, and races to the 47. On the next play, Lynn Shadnoy goes wide for a first down on the Eagle 41. But the Eagles won't budge, and again, Joe Gary provides a perfect placement to narrow their lead to one point. Eagles 14, Steelers 13. Moments later, the ball game breaks wide open. Burke passes from the Pittsburgh 33 intended for Walston. He can't get it, but the officials rule interference by Jack Butler of the Steelers, and the Eagles are on the three in spite of Steeler protests. Then Burke sends Van Buren crashing across the goal line to vault the Eagles into a 2013 lead over the Steelers of Pittsburgh. But wait. That isn't all. On the first play after the kickoff, the Steelers Ottman fumbles. Jerry Cowig snatches up the loose pigskin and romps in to pay dirt as the Eagles score twice in 30 seconds. Eagles 27, Pittsburgh Steelers 13. Late in the game, the Eagles pile on another tally as Burke passes to Sandifer, who turns in one of the best runs of the day, bowling over Steelers right and left and making the final score. Eagles 34, Steelers 13 to keep the Eagles in championship contention. A turnout of 36,000 were almost jolted out of their seats as the inspired Philadelphia Eagles
squared off against the league-leading Browns in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Early in the first quarter, the Eagles drive to the Browns' 35. There, Van Buren circles right end and barrels for 10 more to put the Eagles on the 26. After driving to the 22, the Eagle attack stalls, so Bob Walston boots a perfect three-pointer, and the end of the first period finds the Eagles enjoying a 3-0 lead. The Birds' bruising line halts the Brown attack, and near the end of the half, the Eagles' Jim Palmer bolts straight up the middle for 16 yards and a first down in the Cleveland 16. Supersonic Stephen Van Buren on a crossbuck plows to the two. The very next play finds Steve ramming through the same hole to score for the Eagles. Walston converts and the Birds take a 10-0 lead at halftime. The beginning of the third stanza finds the Brown spark plug Otto Graham dropping back and firing a long, long aerial far downfield. Max Speedy grabs it to complete a sensational 40-yard pass play. The Browns move to the 30, but the big Eagle line rears up to halt the attack. To Lou Groza splits the uprights with a perfect field goal to give Cleveland three points. Shortly after the kickoff, the Browns are once more on the move. Graham fades, uncorks his magic right arm, and sends the pigskin straight and true into the arms of Max Speedy, who goes out of bounds on the Eagle 30. Graham then fakes to his fullback, goes back a few steps, and flips a short screen pass to Ken Carpenter. Carpenter takes it on the 22, cuts between two Eagle defenders, fakes another, and races over for the score. Rosa converts, and the score is all tied up at 10 apiece. Moments later, the Eagles roar into Cleveland territory. Adrian Burke pitches out to Frank Ziegler, and the former Georgia Tech speedster, squeezing through Brown defenders, races all the way down to the Cleveland 42. Tries to lateral. But the ball goes out of bounds, and the Eagles maintain possession and a first down on the 40. But the birds get no farther, so Burke punts from the 50. The ball sails straight down the middle. It's Cleveland's Bob Orstaglio on the fly. The Eagles' Bud Grant recovers, and the birds are only two yards away from pay dirt. Adrian Burke on a quarterback sneak, powers his way over for the score. Walston converts, and the Eagles take a 17-10 advantage. But the Browns are not to be denied. Graham, on the very first play after the kickoff, throws into the flat to Dante Lavalle, and Lavalle tight ropes, dodges, and twists all the way down to the Eagles' 17 for a brilliant 55-yard run to end the third quarter. After one incomplete pass, Graham moves back five yards and rifles the ball to Lavelli, who makes a diving catch in the end zone. Rosa converts, and once more, the score is all tied up. Here's the play that spelled disaster for the Birds. Burke hurries a pass into the flat. The Browns' Warren Lahr picks it out of the air, travels to the 35, laterals to Tony Adamley, who plunges to the Eagle 23. After the offense stalls, Lou Groza splits the uprights and Cleveland forges into the lead 20 to 17. With the clock running out, Burke fires a long aerial to Clyde Scott. Scott takes it on the 45, slips to the turf, gets up and goes to the Brown 45. Three plays later, and with only seconds remaining, Bob Walston tries a 44-yard field goal, but his attempt is short and wide, so the Cleveland Browns down the Philadelphia Eagles 20-17 to, to remain on top of the American Conference. <laughs> At Washington's Griffith Stadium, home TP of the Redskins, the Eagles of Philadelphia were on hand to challenge the Skins' claim to third place in the American Conference standings. Early in the game, the Birds show themselves in fine form as they march on the Washington goal. Adrian Burke tosses to Pete Pihos, and the Burley end batters his way to the Redskin 10. Steve Van Buren lends his pile-driving talents as he bulls to the three. 
Again, the ball goes to Van Buren, and over he goes as the Eagles score in their first series of plays. Philadelphia 7, Washington nothing. A few plays later, the Eagles roll downfield again. Clyde Scott slices off tackle for five. He loses the ball, but Bob Walston is there to recover for the Eagles. Then Scott gives a hint of things to come as he streaks around end into Redskin territory and out of bounds in the 45. Two plays later, Scott gets a pitch out, aims for the goal line, and outruns blockers and tacklers alike as he sprints into the end zone with the second Eagle tally. Walston converts, Eagles 14, Redskins nothing. In the second quarter, the Redskins begin to move. Burke boots for the Eagles from his own 34. He gets away a beauty. It soars to the 21. Harry Gummer is under it, takes it, and sets off a field. He gets a key block and gallops for 37 yards before Ebert Van Buren makes a diving tackle to bring him down on the Eagle 42. Several plays later, George Thomas hits the pitch out from Baugh and races all the way to the Philadelphia 19. After being set back by a penalty, Ball likes to toss one. Hugh Taylor hauls it in as two determined Eagles pin him to the five-yard line. From the three, bullet Bill Dudley barrels into the end zone as the Redskins hit the scoreboard to make it Eagles 14, Redskins 7. With the half running out, Burke mixing his plays nicely, passes for the Eagles. Clyde Scott latches on as he is cut down in the Redskin 9. Then, after an interference penalty, and with just a few seconds left, Van Buren powers in the pay dirt to give the Philadelphians a 21-7 lead over the skins at the half. In the third quarter, the Eagles Scott gets a chance to show his speed again as he hustles around right end for 20 yards to the Washington 48. Then the hard-driving Ziegler turns the other end to bring the ball to the Redskins 34 on a bruising run. Adrian Burke, behind plenty of protection, hurls a pass to Ziegler, who's driven out of bounds on the 14. Watch this next play as Burke passes, this time for the distance. Walston has it in the end zone and somersaults right out of the ballpark before he can stop himself but he gets back in time to boot the conversion as the Eagles take a 28-7 lead. The Redskins have plenty of scoring punch, too. Sling and Sammy Ball lets fly. Bullet Bill Dudley takes it over his shoulder and digs downfield until he is collared on the 17. The Skins pick up a first down on the sixth. Then Rob Goo cuts inside end, scrambles across the final stripe. Now the scoreboard reads, Eagles 28, Redskins 14. But the Eagles have Clyde Scott, and today he's exhibiting his best form so far this year. Around right end he goes, the fastest man on the field, as he races to the Redskin 19. Adrian Burke takes to the air again and heaves his second touchdown pass of the day. Once again, it's rookie Bob Walston who feels it to make it. Eagles 35, Redskins 14. Moments later, an interference penalty puts the skins of the one. Good. Climbs up and over to make the final score read. Eagles 35, Redskins 21. Now that you've enjoyed the thrilling action of 1951, get set for even greater thrills for 1952. Here are some of the new Eagle players, stars of the 1951 collegiate season. This is Big Jim Weatherall, Oklahoma's two-time All-America. To strengthen the line offensively and defensively, the Eagles selected the country's top tackles, and Jim is one of them. This huge fella is Ken Lum Snyder, 225-pound giant from Georgia Tech. Anchoring Illinois' Rose Bowl championship line was Charlie Ulrich. Here's the big Illini, ready for action. One of the country's best linebackers was our own Jerry McGinley from Pennsylvania. Jerry was selected by the Eagles coaches for his outstanding defensive work. And to bolster the quarterback slot, the Eagles secured Bobby Thomason in a trade with the Los Angeles Rams. This is Thomason ready to fire one. Thomason, who was on loan to the Green Bay Packers, led the National League in percentage of completions in 1951 with the amazing accuracy of 
Wow, what a lineup! These stars, plus a host of other top flight newcomers and the returning veterans, will speed the Eagles back into title contention. So get your season tickets now. Reserve your seat for all Shide Park action. You'll see new teams, new stars, and football at its best. <laughs>